Great, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Today I'll be sharing with you on behalf of my colleagues our recent study using MRI in patients with lipedema. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. And so first I wanted to begin by just saying that the process of studying patients with lipedema has been so rewarding and that's primarily because of the great need of patients like yourselves. So the common problem that we hear when patients come in for research is that my physician didn't di could not diagnose my condition and wasn't even aware of it. And the challenge really is that legs that are affected by lipedema are swollen and these patients may appear similar to those with obesity or lymphedema. However, common treatments of diet and exercise or compression therapy are less of, generally less effective in patients with lipedema. And so this leads to the situation where symptoms may onset at puberty or maybe with an event like pregnancy. However, a recent estimate shows that the average age of diagnosis isn't until 44 years of age. And so this really is the clinical unmet need for patients with lipedema, is for tools that can help us to better understand how the fat tissue due to lipedema is different than the fat tissue in obesity or lymphedema even. And if we could develop tools to measure that difference, these may be useful for diagnosing lipedema earlier and additionally evaluating any new therapies that may be developed, which would benefit patients at every stage of lipedema. There we go. So Karen, uh, Dr. Herbst gave a wonderful overview this morning and very thorough of the body's circulatory system. This is just an overview of the concept that the arteries deliver blood to the tissue and the veins return the blood back to the heart and there's a, a difference in how much fluid is returned in the venous system. And the difference is the uptake of the lymphatic vessels and the lymphatic network in the tissue, whose function is primarily to return fluid and waste products from the extracellular space of your tissue. And so one of the components of lymphatic fluid is sodium. And what we know about how lymphatics process sodium is primarily from basic research in uh, rodent models. And so this is a study done by our collaborator that showed that lymphatic vessels grow in response to a high sodium diet. And in the images below, I'm showing an example of functional lymphatic vessels in a normal mouse fed a normal diet where sodium was not elevated in the tissue. The example images on the right are showing lymphatic vessels that were um, from a mouse fed a high salt diet. These vessels were isolated from the skin where the sodium had accumulated in the tissue. And you can notice that the vessels themselves are enlarged, they're a bit dilated, and there's a few more branches on the vessels than you can see from the normal lymphatic vessels in mice. Oops, yeah, there we go, okay. And they went on to show that lymphatic function is essential to clear sodium from the blood circulation and to store it in the skin. We also know that lymphatics are essential for processing fats in the body. For instance, Mice that have dysfunctional lymphatics that don't develop become obese, for instance. And so this led us to the thought and the initial hypothesis that if lymphatics are impaired, say in patients with lipedema, then we may expect that sodium and fat would accumulate. Alternatively, or likewise, one of our collaborators through the Lipedema Foundation has developed a mouse model to study whether improving lymphatic function might reduce that inflammation that could be related to sodium and fat storage in, uh, in the body. And so these are just example images in fat tissue of a normal mouse. And on the right image, it's showing the ability to grow lymphatic vessels and control their growth within the fat tissue itself, where the, those lymphatic vessels are not normally present in these mice. And so these are some of the, tool, the hypotheses that we would like to begin to test and our goal is to develop MRI tools that can measure sodium, fat, and lymphatic function to begin to uh, analyze these, these questions. Okay, there we go. So the study I'll share with you today was specifically testing the hypothesis that tissue sodium and fat content measured using MRI are elevated in patients with lymphatic impairment due to lipedema. We enrolled females with lipedema and females without lipedema who had a similar age, race, BMI and calf circumference or the size of their calf. We, volunteers underwent a non-invasive imaging exam at a clinical field strength, including MR lymphangiography, whole body fat composition MRI, and standardized sodium MRI. And from these images, we measured the relative fat per water volume of the leg and the tissue sodium content in the skin, the subcutaneous adipose tissue, and the muscle. So I'll walk you through examples of each type of imaging. These are examples of whole body MRI images from a female without lipedema and a female with stage one lipedema. And you can see that their BMIs are very similar. 
And as we observe the images, so the white tissue, the white part of the image is showing the fat tissue that surrounds the muscle, and that muscle is the darker part of the image. And so these arrows, let's begin at the top of, this, of the image. You might observe that at the waist, there's a similar amount of fat deposition in these two females. But as you scan down the legs and follow these arrows down, you see there's a greater amount of fat deposition in the legs affected by lipedema. So now we're going to focus on the calf itself. And here are example images of the fat tissue on the top, where the fat is colored white, and the water tissue on the bottom, where the muscle and the skin are bright now in the contrast. And what we can analyze from these images is the volume of fat tissue compared to the volume of water in the tissue itself, and we produce a fat to water ratio. And you can see that uh, value is three times higher in this example patient with lipedema. Okay. The next images I want to show you are examples of non-invasive MR lymphangiography using MRI. This is uh, an example in a stage one patient with lipedema and a patient with lipolymphedema characterized by pitting edema of the tissue. And these images were acquired below the knee down through the ankle. Pointing, uh, out, pointed out by the green arrows are vessel structures, and you can see there are a few more vessel structures visible in the patient with additional lymphedema on top of, of uh, their lipedema. The blue arrows are pointing to pockets of fluid that are stuck in the tissue, and this may be consistent with lymph stasis because we see this difference as, the, um, as we look at an example patient with advancing lip, uh, lipolymphedema, where there's more of a cloudy uh, appearance of the signal. And that's consistent with congestion in the tissue that we might call lymph stasis. And so these were images acquired in 11 minutes without contrast agent using MRI. Okay, here's our few examples of sodium images from a patient with lipedema stage one and a female without lipedema. These two females have similar calf circumference, which means that the outside of their calf that you would measure externally is the same. But when we look internally, you can see that the fat image shows a slightly higher ratio of fat per water in the tissue. The sodium images are colored uh, on the right side of the screen. And so the colors that are warmer, like yellows and reds, they correspond to higher tissue sodium versus the blue regions that are a bit lower. And so first, the arrow here points to the skin, which appears as an outer ring around the leg itself. Next, I'm pointing to the subcutaneous adipose tissue just below the skin. And in this example patient with lipedema, we see a region of high tissue sodium build up in that region. And finally, the black circle is uh, just a, showing an example within the muscle tissue itself. So overall, there's a greater amount of sodium deposition in, in the patient example shown here. Okay, so now I'm going to show the group level results from this study. The graph on the left is showing sodium content from three regions of the tissue, the skin, the subcutaneous adipose tissue, and the muscle. The gray boxes represent data from females without lipedema, and the white boxes represent data from females with lipedema. And what we measured was a significant increase in the sodium concentration in the skin and sodium content, excuse me, in the skin and the subcutaneous adipose tissue in legs affected by lipedema. And we also measured in the graph on the right the fat to water ratio between controls and patients with lipedema. And this was significantly elevated in the patients with lipedema in their legs. And again, those legs were um, matched for calf circumference. Okay, in a sub-analysis of this study, we looked at patients with earlier stages one to two lipedema compared to females with, again, a similar age, B, uh, race, BMI, and calf circumference. And we found similar trends among this population. So tissue sodium was uh, significantly increased in the skin and the subcutaneous adipose tissue. And as well, the fat to water ratio was, um, was significantly higher in patients with even stage one to two lipedema. So it's the concept that these components of the tissue are already um, uh, representative of lipedema at the earliest stages. So in summary, our goal was to develop a preliminary diagnostic imaging exam that could help di to differentiate lipedema from obesity. I demonstrated in this talk uh, non-invasive MRI protocols that could be applied in under 30 minutes. And these are uh, commercially using commercially available tools, and so this exam is, is clinically feasible. Our results show that calf tissue sodium and fat deposition are higher in patients with lipedema compared to women with similar BMI. And in our ongoing research, we would like to apply MRI of lymphatic vessels using that non-invasive MR lymphangiography scan uh, with sodium MRI to understand how lymphatic function relates to sodium and fat deposition in patients with lipedema. And with that, I just want to acknowledge that this work isn't possible without a host of expertise and as well funding support from the Lipedema Foundation and FDRS. And thank you for listening.